All right. So I, I thought maybe now would be a good time for us to just look at some uh, a, a simple Jupyter notebook walk walkthrough. Um, maybe we can also uh, try and play around with this and try and see if we can make sense out of this thing. Um, so as usual, I will share this on the on the. Um, <coughs> On the collaborative editor, so if you can, you should be able to find these things here. Uh, <clears throat> very basic uh, examples that we have, and and um, what I was hoping we could do is uh, instead of doing the exercises ourselves, but. Uh, I'll, I'll be walking you through exactly what's happening, and then you can run, you can run through the examples yourselves and, and try and see if you can pl play around with the with the notebook itself. So if you go here, I think you should should have bookmarked it. You will find um, you will find these things here. Okay, so this is the link right here. All you have to do is just go here. Uh, oh, uh, this should I forgot to? So should that one have a one at the end, or should it end with four? Oh, so four one. Sorry, it should be a one at the end. I don't know why I did this. I'll put it at the, the one with the one at the end. That's fine. That will be the last entry down there. And uh, for those of you asking for the pa password is password for one plus three T. If you need access to Wi-Fi, access. Sorry. One plus three T. Uh, maybe the classroom could f follow up with these guys to find out the password for postgrad. I don't think it's supposed to have the password. But <clears throat> uh, so you the the only strange things that you notice here is uh, how to use Porter's stemma, for instance. Look at it just now, and then some um, examples on how to use pandas to detect duplicates and walk us through. Everything else should be the same. Like I mean. Uh, uh, case folding is pretty intuitive because what you're doing is you're making use of um, uh, the built-in functions, right? Uh, uh, let's see what else uh, you're going to. So stemming. Uh, so the stopwedge removal is um, is going to require that you use NLTK. Um, that's yet another Python library here, uh, natural language toolkit. Um, but you look at the, you should see the examples, see exactly how you get to do that. Can I move to the notebook and then? So all you have to do is just import the once you download the notebook, import it into import it into uh, import it into Google Colab and then boom, that's it. You should be able to, or if you've installed, uh, if you've installed Jupyter Classic, then you should be able to do that also. But you just want to make sure that you, in Google Colab, you, you have, um, you download also those two CSV files because they're the ones that are, uh, that are used in the notebook itself. OK. 
Okay. There we go. Okay, again, in case people are, are wondering here yeah, as they are walking through the notebook, I don't know if everybody has this, but uh, uh, please ignore the <laughs> the first two cells. So the first two cells, I use them to, because I understand that some people might maybe struggle to run this. So what I do also is I, if you've noticed, I always share the PDF and the uh, um, IPY NB uh, file, right? So the idea is to, for you to have access to this, which has already, the PDF document will always have uh, the stuff already generated. So the, the code that you're seeing in the first two cells generates this part here and, and the table of contents. So you can ignore it, that's not important. In fact, you can exclude it from, once you download this notebook and, and you, you, you import it into your Collab account, you can exclude it. These two things are not important here. These two cells here, these are irrelevant really. Okay, so if you need, uh, I don't know if everybody has done this, it would be nice if we could uh, play along here. Uh, yes? No? Uh, uh, is everybody okay with the downloading of the notebook? Oh, the link, sorry. And, uh, there we go. <coughs> Are you okay with the notebook there? Or? No? Yes. You have to mount the drive. Oh, you want to mount the drive. Yeah, yeah. so you can do two things. So. Maybe the mounting of the drive will take time. So if you're, if you're using Colab and you're planning to mount and you think it's going to take time, you can just upload those things. But, but remember the difference between uploading and mounting is that uh, once the session dies, then everything will be wiped. So then every time you want to do this, you'll have to. So you can either just click the um, file. Did you, have you downloaded the IPython from here? Have you gone, you want to? We can go here first. Yeah, there. Or you, or you download, yeah. So and then just uh, say open notebook or something, or up, upload notebook. Up, upload notebook. And then, yeah. Is there anyone else uh, struggling with something? Yeah. Yeah. This. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that, 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 that folder has, uh, has everything we, we will need to do this. Um, I'm tempted that maybe, I don't know, maybe next week when we meet, uh, or maybe not, I don't know. I was thinking of which data set we can use for images as you're working through this. And uh, I don't know, maybe the Lord digits or something. Or maybe, I was thinking maybe we can ask Francis to share his data set perhaps. I don't know if people would be interested. That would be fun. Instead of using the generic, um, I don't know, the the low digits data set or something. I don't know. Um, can I start the walkthrough? Is it fine just to explain what's happening as you are running this? You want to make sure this is running for you as well, right? Um, I mean, so you notice that uh, this particular cell, what I'm doing is pretty t trivial stuff here. Uh, so listen, uh, line number, and so far as text processing is concerned, of course, line number two, three, and four are important, right? First line is nothing more than a comment. Um, line number two will enable me use pandas, right? I'm importing pandas as PD. So somewhere down here, you should be able to see PD dot, PD dot, then I'm using Python pandas. Um, and the line number three allows me to import a regular expression, RE, right? And I think this is where uh, this package allows us to gain access to punctuations. I think my memory says me right, but we'll, so, we'll soon see just now. Uh, I don't know, I can't remember. Is it? The link? Oh, okay. Uh, and then, this should have been rewritten somehow here. Uh, 
line number six will only become relevant once we start looking at the transformation of the data, right? Um, line number seven is not really important because all we are doing is, uh, uh, you know, it's to do with the, the Jupyter notebook itself. So ignore line number seven. Line number eight allows us to gain access to stop weights. So what you want to do, maybe just a quick test here, is um, if you were to open a new cell and before we start running the thing, I think it would be important for us to look at some of these examples here. If you open a new cell below and you just run this command for nltk.copas import uh, stop words and then right below that uh, create another cell. If I just say uh, stop words dot, what is it? How do I access the stop words? Well, if all else fails, help. I'm trying to see how we can gain access to the English stop words here. Uh, I guess to be DR, uh, DIR. But words, I couldn't see words here. It's weird. I wonder why I can't see words here. But anyway, so uh, apparently, if I want to gain access to, according to this, this should work or something, right? So this is what I was talking about. So what what you'd be doing when you're working with English text is. Uh, you are removing these things here, right? Uh, because they, it, so when you're working with text data, uh, any occurrence of he, uh, they, them is irrelevant. It adds, it doesn't add any value to, when you look at the, when you, when you look at the individual words, right? Not the meaning, not the semantics of the, the combination of so many multiple words, but the individual words, he, she, him, uh, has this make no sense, right? So these are the things you're looking at. And in fact, if you're interested in finding out how many stop words there are in English, I guess we can use the built-in len, right? So what we're doing is removing these 179 words. Um, and I do believe if you happen to find yourself working with French, I guess, I don't know, French, then these are the stop words you'd be removing. So what I was saying about Chichewa and DC laws is uh, would have to perhaps go to a linguist and ask them what, what, what sort of stop words uh, are a part of the uh, Silozi vocabulary, right? And then they'll be able to give us this. And so if you were analyzing data from Facebook, uh, those funny comments that people make in a combination of different languages, you'd isolate the different languages and then narrow down to Silozi and then you remove the uh, stop with associated with slows, right? Uh, anyway, I don't know if this is making sense. Is that fine? Um, yes. <coughs> NLTK? Yes. yes it, it tells you if you don't have it on your machine because so some of these, the actual stop words actually are text files. Once you download, there'll be text files sitting on your machine. So the usual instructions, it tells you how to download, right? Yeah, so you just follow the instructions. But, but you only get to download it once, not multiple times. And I think if you're using Google Colab, you sh I don't know if it also prompts you to download, I don't know. It does, right? Yeah. Okay, so again, uh, so, hmm, so the portal stemma, right? Um, you, you actually gain access to it using NOTK as well, right? So this, is, this would be our line number nine here. Uh, so you just import from nltk.stem.porter, you import the porter stemmer. Um, and then you, you just create at some place down here, you notice us create um, an instance of the porter stemmer, right? Porter stemmer. Let's just go down to it. Yeah? 
Uh, so you create an, an instance of the Porter stemmer, and then using the instance of the Porter stemmer, you can then stem individual weights. So if you look at, uh, so if we were to say, um, again, if we just to go back here, before we start running the examples, I thought we'd just look at some some individual things specific to what we're discussing there. So again, if I go in the cell and then I I um, I import Porter stemma and then I'll just say var Porter is equal to uh, zip. Um, and then using this, I would then be able to stem individual words, right? So uh, am I doing the right thing here? The Porter dot stem, right? So observe if I say man and porter dot stem if i say main right what am i doing here if i run these things <sighs> this is a bad example ah study okay let's, let's just do one so study is study right studying Studying is going to be stemmed to the same root phrase. That's the whole point of stemming, right? Studying is the same as study. It's the same as uh, studied, right? So this is this is the whole point of doing studied. Um, all of these are stemmed to the same thing. Now I don't know if um, we can stem uh, Zambia. Zambia. Zamb. Sorry. Zambezi. Zambezi. No, I don't, I don't think so. Zambe. Zambezi, no, it's a different word, but okay. how about Zambia and Zambian, right? Zambian, Zambian. No, it's not stemming as well. Zam but Zambians and Zambian is probably Zambian still, right? So I was thinking maybe Zambian, Zambian and Zambians would more or less be the same uh, root or something. But I don't, I don't know if you're getting the point here. The, the whole point of doing this is, again, you, you have to... I don't know if you appreciate the uh, the fact that um, the data set for ETDs, the examples that are in here, will be working with, let's as, as, just assume we are working with abstracts, that 500 or so weights, right? Ultimately, the vector that you're going to derive is going to have to be composed of unique words found in all the documents in the corpus. So our corpus is about 3,000 documents, right? Or abstracts for 3,000 plus ETDs. So what you're doing is you're saying, get the abstract for document one, document two, document three, document three, the entire abstract of those sentences, all the way up to document 3,000, and then get the unique set of words. Now, if you don't stem these things, if you don't remove stop weights, you notice that that string, the vector itself, is going to be massive or huge, right? So that's the whole point of stemming and removing stop weights or something. Uh, okay, I don't know if this is making sense. Stemming and uh, this is not that hard, is it? Stemming and all these different things here. <coughs> Hopefully, these import statements make sense. These others, you can ignore them. I, I normally, you notice that these. Uh, We'll look at this once we look at uh, uh, temp frequencies and uh, uh, temp frequency in this document, uh, frequency, TFIDF. Um, so line number 10 and 11, we discuss them during data transformation. And then you almost always see line number 13 to 15 because it's just, uh, it allows me to, to uh, output cells in a certain way, right? Um, so for instance, when I run a cell that has multiple things, if I have this, it will be able to show output for the different uh, commands in that particular cell. Otherwise, if I don't have this, then I only see the output for the last command. Okay. Uh, this is an example here. So, um, I, th I thought maybe to, to just try and exemplify some of the things that we we, we just went through here. Maybe just a quick walkthrough for this data set, our data set here. Um, and as usual, what you want to do is you, you start by 
trying to, to understand the structure of the data itself. Um, we know this structure already. It's a pipe separated, um, um, well, it's a data set that has columns that are pipe separated here. Uh, so what I am doing as a very first thing is for me to be able to work with these within Python, I'm saying I am going to create a pandas data frame, right? So maybe I will I'll restart this from scratch so that we're able to walk through this together. I do hope people are able to work through this together with me. Uh, okay. okay, so import statements there. This is just uh, markdown, so it's not important. I'm just rendering this stuff here. Um, also not very important here. Um, so, like I said, what, what I'm doing here in, in this particular cell is just to, to inspect the contents of this CSV file. So I'm just running a shell command here, right? Um, a shell command that's just going to look at the last three records in this file. So these are the records here. Um, um, and then afterwards, what I am, and you could use tail if you want, I mean head if you want to, it doesn't matter, or cut. And then in this particular cell, what we're doing is we are creating a pandas data frame. Because the data we are working with is a CSV file, we have to use the function read under bar CSV. If this data was um, HTML or JSON, we'd have to use pd.readjson. So uh, the function that you use to read the data depends on the format of data that you're working with. And you'd know these things beforehand, but if someone just dish, dishes out data for you, one of the very first few things you would do is check the structure of the data, right? Inspect it. So I create a pandas data frame. By default, it assumes that the commas, if you if you run read CSV, it assumes that the records are separated by a comma, comma separated values, right? <coughs> but because the data that we are working with in this file are separated by the pipe symbol, I have to explicitly use the sep um, the sep parameter here. I explicitly tell you to say this is uh, it uses the pipe separator. Um, Again, it depends on the type of data that you're working with. Because we're working with abstracts, some, well, this is different. If you're working with abstracts, some abstracts in there will have full stops and commas because they're sentences, right? So you want to be very careful what you're using as a separator. Otherwise, you are confused. You're going to confuse pandas, and then you have like a, a stuff that is not properly formatted in the data frame itself. Um, <clears throat> and then what I and maybe I should have separated these here so that uh, people are able to see the, it doesn't matter. Line number two, I read the CSV file. Line number three just describes, or it shows me the different columns associated with the data itself. Hmm? What columns? So data frame name dot columns. What columns are associated with the data frame? I have a timestamp uh, column, full name, student ID, hometown, what is your program minus is a long column, right? And, and really, uh, this explains why <clears throat> in line number six, and I almost, you almost always do this actually, especially if you're working with a data set that has a number of columns, right? You want to make sure that the columns you're working with use names that are much easier to work with. It would be difficult for you to have a column that is named, to start working with a column that is named, what made you decide on your computer program minor question mark? So what you do is you can take advantage of the rename function to rename these columns. This is what I'm doing here. So I'm providing a mapping to say for the column full name, rename it to student name. For column student ID, rename it to student ID one would combine together, right? These are nothing more than just a you know, uh, functions associated with uh, pandas that I'm using here. So I rename them in line number six. And then after I rename them, I again check to see if the renaming has worked to my satisfaction, right? So observe, the first, the first output here corresponds to the data frame dot column command, right? Which is line number three. 
The second output just, you won't have output for the second command because you're just renaming and then finally um, you have this output. These are the renamed columns. Okay? So I renamed my columns and then it's a lot easier for me to work with these things. Um, and then finally I, I, again within pandas I say in line number 22, I just want to inspect that my, my formatted data frame, if we can use that word, the, the data frame that has now the revised column names, I want to see some sample records in that particular data frame. So I run data frame name, which is var ICT 1110 uh, tail. Again, similar to the shell command, I just want to take a peek at the last three records. Right? Now because, if you look at the number of records, because I have a number of records, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 records, for me to be able to make sense out of these records, sample records, I take advantage of yet another, I'm chaining the commands here, I transpose it, right? So the dot T means just transpose the output. So observe, if in line number two I don't transpose it, look at the output, right? It's transposed here, the, the columns are here, right? I don't know if you've gone through these examples. But if I don't transpose it, what I have is is something that would ideally not really be, I guess it's not very visually appealing for me anyway, so uh, usually it's, it's a lot easier for me to just twist it around so that I, I can see the records much better, but whatever works for you, right? Um, again, I, the, most of these things I think are things that probably came out when you, I hope you went through these exercises. I do encourage you to go through the exercises again. I'll share the solutions if um, I'll share the solutions. You probably want to go through the solutions so that you understand some of these things because they'll come up over and over again, especially merging, right? Merging all data sets, you see the renaming of the different columns, um, how you identify duplicates, how you describe um, a data frame, right? Data frame name don't describe, very simple things. <coughs> okay, so hopefully this makes sense. So I've I have renamed the columns and I'm satisfied that the resulting data frame, the modified data frame does make sense, it's fine, I can proceed to the next cell now. Um, again, so what I'm doing in this particular cell is I'm saying, um, and this I guess ties into our discussion here where I was saying sometimes it might be necessary for you to, to really try and explore the individual columns rather than looking at the uh, records individually, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm saying um, I'm interested in getting a sense of the different miners. Uh, and I was just curious here because I was I was interested in knowing uh, the motivation behind students choosing miners. It's, it's strange, it's strange the decision they, they use that side, right? When you ask them, they say, it's because the second year said this is easy. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, okay, that's a uh, Interesting way of looking at this. If I were here looking at different things. So, um, line number two, uh, what I'm saying is I am again using tell function here. I I want to just isolate this one column. So I want to see the contents of the column minor program, and I just want to see the last 15 records, which is why I'm chaining this dot tell dot tell. And already you can see here I have uh, for the records that I have the last the last uh, the last couple of 15 records here record number 24 they're up to 38 have history history mathematics academic writing and study mathematics um, and because this was coming from a questionnaire by the way which is why some characters would be shouting and writing all uppercase maths right some would be doing the right thing some would lose all lowercase students. <clears throat> okay, so again, uh, after I, I look at the last couple of records, what I'm doing here is uh, just counting, right? Um, I'm interested in just counting uh, the different miners that are there, and I'm converting it to a list really. Uh, just trying to showcase the fact that uh, you can, within pandas, using a pandas data frame, you can convert the data into um, a different data structure if you want to, depending on the type of uh, operations that you're performing. Okay, so converting it into a list here. Um, uh, 
and then I don't know if people, I don't know if you're following here, but uh, would we be able to speculate why we have line number eight here? What the hell is going on here? How are we able to? So if you look at in line number five, I'm just we're just counting the total number of entries of miners, right? But in line number seven, there's a comment that says extract the unique program miner entries. Can we guess how we are, should I zoom this in? Can we guess how line number eight results in a unique set of miners? Go back here. Line number eight here. How is it possible that we're able to get the unique entries here using this? If you want to look at the output, by the way, it's here. These are all the miners. Uh, well, these are the unique miners, actually. I'm getting the final unique miners. This is a count, and then these are the unique miners. Forget the fact that um, uh, this is supposed to be, it's unique, but because of casing, right? There's a bit of an issue here, but I was hoping people could uh, remember what's happening here, the use of set and list. If you remember the traits of uh, those different data structures, a set, a list, tuple, uh, you remember that um, a set, a set will always, and this is where the, these cheap tricks come in handy, right? A set will always, x is equal to 1, 1, 5, 4. Do you remember this? So a set will always, no, if you, irrespective of whether you have duplicate entries, but it will just return unique entries. Right? So um, <clears throat> just, I guess, a reminder to us to say, in certain instances, you'd have to use some of these Python idioms and uh, to achieve your overall objective, right? And implicitly, by the way, some of the things we are doing here tied to another phase that we'll soon ex explore, uh, exploratory data analysis, right? So we're analyzing the data, trying to make sense out of um, uh, the contents of the data. Already I have a sense of, for this particular uh, this particular column, I know that the entries I have are not using a consistent casing. Uh, I don't know if people can spot some other things here, first years. Typos, they're probably typos here, I guess, I don't know. I don't, I hope there are typos here, please. <coughs> okay, pause for the typos. Outlier, right? This was me, it was a test. There's no minor course called data mining. So already this would be like a classic outlier. What do you do with an outlier? The wise thing to do for this is you just check it out because this is wrong, right? <coughs> um, you know, already if I was analyzing this, this would be like a, a stop word, right? And now it would depend on whether it would be necessary for me to remove stop words here. Perhaps not actually, because, I mean, it depends. Do you think it would be necessary for us to remove stop words or not? For this particular data set, perhaps not, right? Because the meaning of this, these are actually program miners, so you want to maintain the meaning, right? Um, yeah, so. I was hoping I could find a, a typo, but there's no. <clears throat> Here's the other thing, right? And I, I don't know. I don't know what would classify this as, right? So, this is language. This is languages 1220 and 1200. But it's a minor. This person probably misrepresented the question, right? And decided to, to write the actual course codes, right? Instead of just a program minor. But these are things to think about. This is what I'm trying to get at here is that. This data set already tells us that we need to clean it up somehow, right? Reconcile things that we know are common somehow. Now, how you go about reconciling these is probably up to you. In my case, maybe uh, by just inspecting this data, I would say remove all numbers already, right? I'll probably use uh, could use a regular expression package and just say isolate all the numbers because I don't want the cost codes. I just want the the the, the minor name, right? Um, in certain instances, maybe come up with a mapping or something that makes sense uh, to say, whenever you see, look at this. This is the same as this character is providing the, the course code instead of the actual minor, right? So these are things to think about here. Case folding, um, outliers, uh, 
so white space, thank you, punctuation, right? This, the casing is the same. The question to ask yourself is why, why is it that we have unique entries but uh, these are considered, these two things are considered uh, to be separate entities. This has a white space. I don't know what this character was thinking, maybe it was a mistake and they pressed the space bar or something, right? So, <coughs> right, so the question then is, I mean, how, how exactly do we go about doing these different things, right? I was just pointing out the obvious things here, but how do we go about case folding and whatnot? Turns out it's trivial stuff for the most part. Um, in fact, case folding is probably one of the easiest things, right? Um, string objects allow you access to certain cool functions like lower, title, thank you very much, or upper, upper, right? So in this case, all I'm doing is um, first I count, before I apply case folding, I'm trying, in line number three, I'm trying to say I want to count all the entries for the minors. After I count them, in line number six, I, well, it's just a, a short form, I'm looping through, because this is a list, right? I am looping through, I am looping through this list, and every time I loop, this is a short form anyway, every time I loop, uh, I apply, for each entry that I loop through, I get the lowercase version of that entry. Right? Um, uh, and then I put everything into a list. Uh, once I put everything into a list, I go to, and I, I think I should have been counting here. Let me just run this. Uh, so when I count the entries at 25, I loop through the list and then uh, make sure that I'm using a consistent lowercase casing for everything else. What I should do here is confirm to say once I, I, I apply case folding to all the entries, do I end up with less than with less than 25 entries? I should because there are some characters that had uh, all uppercase things, right? Oh, it's the same. Why? I guess it's because of maths again. I was hoping mathematics would actually. You see, this is a bad example. I was hoping things like maths would uh, come up, but this maths again has. Uh, a punctuation. So this will probably give us a correct thing once we apply, uh, we remove the punctuations. And this, this brings us to another interesting question. I don't know if you're thinking about this, right? Uh, what, when you're working with text, because you're doing so many different things, the question to ask yourself is what do you start with first? You see, you're, you're, you're case folding, you're stemming, you're removing the stop words. So you're, you're removing the stop words. I don't know if people are thinking about these stop words. Stem, stemming, punctuation. Uh, what else? Case folding. Uh, what else are we, for text processing? This is pretty much it. Right? So the question to ask yourself, right, is what, what, what is? Does the order matter? Does it matter that you first of all start by STEMI, stop words, punctuation, case folding, or you, stop, you start with stop words, and then you STEM, you remove punctuations, and cause case folding. I don't know if people are, are thinking about it. Sorry? Okay, what, what order would you follow? <laughs> Why do you think it matters, though? Do you have an example in mind or something? This is interesting. I think uh, if you're going to remove right? Right. You have to the same case first. Right, yeah. That is true. Yeah, that's that's interesting. So remove the punct. That's a key thing here. If you think about remove the punctuation, if you think uh, 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 something like um, Zambian, full stop, because the full stop is closer to the end. If you don't remove, uh, so I am Zambian, and then. A, a Zambian, a Zambian, a Zambian is an interesting character or something. You notice that this occurrence of Zambian is different from this because this full stop is immediate after the end. So then it makes sense that we have probably removed punctuations first. Um, I don't know what other order you'd follow here. Uh, you, did you suggest punctuations and then you said what else? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So punctuation. I mean, so you, you the last thing you'd want to do is stem before you remove the stop words, right? So you you we know that you definitely need to remove the stop words before you stem, right? So uh, this is getting interesting. In fact, if I if I if I what I would do is after I remove the punctuations, then I would personally apply case folding, right? Just because if you look at, uh, if you run stop words dot words in quotes English, those are all our case, right? So I would apply case folding, and then after case folding, then I would apply, I would remove the stop words. After I remove the stop words, then I, I stem, right? And then after stemming, then I would start thinking about uh, deduplication. Um, although when you're looking at, uh, a text, a text content, like the abstracts, there would be no need for duplication because it's, it's a chunk of text, right? 500, te 500, anywhere between 200 and 500, maybe it's a thousand, I don't know, DRGS guide, guidelines here. Uh, what to expect? This would be fun before we wrap up. We still have time, actually. Uh, DRGS. It's, I don't know if people are following with what I'm, what we are, hmm. I want to, Show us something here. Uh, academic. Hmm. There we go. <clears throat> so if you look at the DIGS uh, regulations, it says uh, the abstract is uh, 500 words. So what you expect is, you expect if you're working with the ETDs, you expect to be working with, the example we have, we have 3,000 plus ETDs. You cannot apply, uh, you can't, you wouldn't, the last thing you'd want to do is duplicate the actual abstracts. Uh, because what you're working with is, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is there a way of, of identifying duplicates in, I don't know if I'm making sense here. You have 500 words, text, for an abstract, another chunk of text. How would you run the duplicate function, right? Perhaps you'd remove the, the duplicates using the unique key identifier, that's what I'm saying. Or maybe, this is interesting, I've never really thought about this. If you have, uh, you, 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 you read the abstract, the 3,000 abstracts, 500 words each. 500 words, five, approximately 500 words, approximately 500 words, all the way up to 3,000 occurrences, right? One, two, three, up to 3,000 plus occurrences. Would we be able to get the text, the 500 words, electronic engineering, blah, 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 that's the abstract, right? 500 words. Can we deduplicate based on the chunks of words? That's what I'm saying. I think it's possible. Yeah, okay. If it's possible, then the duplication, perhaps before stemming or after stemming. In fact, it wouldn't matter if you did du du duplication after or before stemming. Why? Because if these are duplicates, whether you stem or you don't stem, it's the same thing, right? Um, but these are things to think about anyway. As you are running these, some of these things, you want to make sure that you think, up, think things through. And in fact, when you are running these, when you are doing this in actual practice, you try out different variations of things. What works? You, um, you carry forward, if it doesn't work, then you know you try out something else that could potentially work. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and by the way, I, I'm waffling around here, like going to DRGS regulations to try and show you that I'm able to work on this particular problem because I understand the domain. I know where to look for information if I'm trying to verify things. But if I was like Francis, what I would have to do, and I'm working with uh, some really smart students who are doing this, I would have had to go to DRGS, sit down with people, business understanding, right? How is an abstract formatted and whatnot? <clears throat> anyway, and then they'll be able to explain to you why you find, uh, ooh, why you find, uh, what was I running? Was this one uh, here? Okay, it's here. Uh, why you find things like, uh, okay, there's no abstract here why you find I must I must uh, just show you this ex example just so we can 
they'll be able to tell you and if you didn't understand if you did not understand this you would go there and ask them say but why is it that when I look at the records the the abstract why do you start the abstract with with the word abstract dot right you know like if you notice that this is because this is the way it is by the way we just lifted the stuff there then maybe they'll tell you say, oh no, no this is a mistake so then you know that when you're cleaning up the data your abstract should get rid of this because if you include this thing it's going to distort your results right especially if there are other abstracts that don't have this abstract word I don't know if I'm making sense here but that's all part of the cleaning up process anyway um, <clears throat> all right uh, so we, we do case folding and unfortunately this was a bad example because we after applying case folding it turns out that we have the same number of records why because of punctuations um, <clears throat> Okay, and, and uh, if you are ashamed here, that, but it's fine. Uh, I'm not using pandas to deduplicate here. So for deduplication, because this is a relatively simple data set, I'm taking advantage of my knowledge of the different Python data structures. I know that a set contains unique words. So I'm attempting to deduplicate here, and I know this, this won't work. Well, did, did it work? I wonder why. Did, that, did we remove punctuations here? Why is this working, but it didn't work before? Interesting. I don't know if people have noticed what's happening here. You see, when we ran this here, right? When we check the length of, um, we, we're checking the length of the of the this data from that has the minus. It's 25, right? It's 25, and then we we apply case folding. We convert everything to lower case and then count it again after converting everything to lower case, right? And then it turns out that we still have 25. But then when we come here and we... This is interesting. <coughs> yes? Uh, we, we, didn't, we didn't duplicate. We didn't du duplicate here, yeah. So, we do, we do in fact have things that are the same, like there's no difference between religious studies and religious studies. So we're actually deduplicating in this cell below, right? So this is good. There are actually three religious studies here. So you notice that we, um, we deduplicate here. And really you notice that what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using lists and sets here, a combination of lists and sets, because I'm working with lists. I uh, I convert uh, I this is a, this is a list right I convert it to a set so that I get unique values and then convert it back to a list just because I prefer myself to work with lists uh, lists are, are very intuitive because they are like arrays right so I'm very used to that type of data structure um, but you could just as well have converted this to a tuple now that you've deduplicated, right? Doesn't matter. And in fact, a tuple is more efficient than a list, if you remember our discussion. Um, right, so finally we end up with a list of 20 unique entries for our sm small corpus here. Uh, and then an example of um, punctuation, and, and I don't know if people are again following, if you, if you compare what we are walking through to what we said here, we it turns out that the different variations of doing things, we did not start with removing punctuations first. I don't know if you noticed them. We, we did case folding and then deduplication, uh, and, and then now we're doing punctuation removal. Whether this results in something that makes sense or not is besides the point. We're just showcasing the process you'd go through, right? Um, right, so removing the punctuations here, Again, I'm, I'm going through the process. I always do this. You'll find this in most of the cells that are, the, the Jupyter Notebooks I'll be sharing. I always test things before and after to see what the difference is like. So um, more or less in most of the cells, I have the same things before and after so that I see if there's any change. <clears throat> right. So um, uh, what I'm doing in line number six here is, uh, again, I'm looping through the list. Right. This is 
least comprehension is what they call it here. Instead of for for I in that do the loop, it's just a shortcut here. It's a shortcut for what you do with the for loop here. Least comprehension. Uh, so what I'm doing is uh, the removal of uh, punctuations here is very basic. I am trimming. Uh, when you well stripping sorry when you're stripping I think you're removing text is it before or after or just after something I don't know we can test this observe if you have uh, x is equal to Zambian with a with two spaces enter x with two spaces right if I say this dot strip notice that you are removing but what if, what if we I think I don't know if strip is before and after or after alone X, X has a padding before and after, a white space rather. So if I run X with strip, so it, it's after and before, which is why I'm running this, this strip uh, function there. Right, so that I remove any white space, thank you for the white space, before and after. Uh, and then after I remove the white space before and after, again, to dedupli deduplicate, I again take advantage of the fact that a set um, only returns unique values and then I convert it back to a list. Again, sorry if this is confusing, but the reason I do this is because lists are much easier to work with. Right? You can do so much with lists. Okay, so if I run this and compare the, the result of punct and whatnot, you notice that, um, and in fact what we should do here is uh, we have 20 and 15. Notice that? Is it 20 and 15? Yeah. So we have 20 and 15. So after we remove the white space, we reduce the size of our corpus to 15 from 20. Initially it was 25, 50, 25, 20, 15. Oh, hi. Oh, we are coming just now, coming out. <coughs> just slide. Um, and then, I mean, uh, stop with removal here. I'm just, uh, so I'm, I'm saying I just want, I don't want to see all the 179, if you remember the two numbers of English stop words, I just want to see the first 20, just to make sure that I'm working with English stop words. Um, then once I do that, uh, in here, I'm removing the stop words. Again, uh, I was going to say I'm losing this comprehension here. Yes, it is this comprehension, but rather complex thing here. Uh, I'm looping through the, uh, resulting 15 words, right? <clears throat> and then I am saying for each of the words in, in this new corpus that has 15 entries, after removing the, the punctuations, these things here, for each one of these, I am, I am going to attempt to remove things like and, 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 and in fact, and is probably the only stop word here. I don't know if this is... So, uh, in this cell, what I'm doing is I'm saying remove all the different stop words and then stitch the words together. In fact, I'm doing a number of things here. What am I doing? Be because the you you have to th think for for a second and pause. You couldn't you can't possibly remove stop words as a whole because some minors are a combination of diff different words. So what you're doing is you want to say for each one of these entries look through the different words and detect if one of the words is a stop word. If it is, remove it, right? So this doesn't apply, but when, the moment you come to languages, you are going to look through, check, is languages into the stop word list? If it is, remove it. If not, leave it, right? Is this in the stop word list? And then you come to and you find that it is. But again, I'm taking advantage of list comprehension here. Uh, so not here, in the next cell. Uh, and then finally, you notice that my resulting corpus will not have and, right? The ands are not there. Uh, listen, the, the stemming part is pretty trivial as well. All we're doing here is, um, and, and you, again, you see this over and over again when you're working with data frames. So for, if, if, you, if one of the columns has text in a data frame, what you do is you look through the entries in that data frame, and then you apply um, a particular function, right? So if you are stemming, then you say for this column, just apply Potter stem or something. So you run the uh, data frame value dot stem, right? Oh, sorry, is it this stemma instance dot stem and then the data frame uh, column that you're looping through, or column value that you're looping through at that point in time. Um, that's it. So it's what I'm trying to say is in most of these instances, 
when you are removing stop words from a data frame or when you are stemming content to the data frame, you are looping through all the records and applying this. Um, yeah, so you are creating an instance of the stem and then just testing that uh, it actually works on languages. Uh, and then uh, I'm checking the length here. And I'm checking the length because I want to see once I stem, is it going to result in, and this is a terrible example because uh, um, uh, I, I don't know if there's actually a change. I mean, what are we stemming here, right? You understand what I mean? We will stem studies, it will be star D, but it won't make a difference. We'll probably still end up with the same, um, same, same size of the corpus. Uh, so I, I apply put a stemmer there, and then quite right, it, we see that it works once you stem these things. Mathamat, French, data mining, you know, religious education, history, um, all these different things. And then let's see what happens when we count. Uh, oh, it looks like it worked. I don't know where the one stemmed value is. <laughs> this is strange. I, I don't know if people can, the parting away thing here, I don't know if people can notice what has been stemmed. Oh, what is this? So it's out of these things here, what are we stem What are we stemmed? To its root. Sorry, geography. Where is, where is the other geography? Language and language. Oh, thank you. Right. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay. So we know where the one is. Languages and language. Right. Thanks. Um, I don't know what game this was. In. I don't know if this is a special paper two or something. It'll probably fail. But um, I, I do hope. Uh, I don't know. This is. I hope this is a. Okay, introduction to to the text preprocessing part. Perhaps uh, image preprocessing, you want us to include it, we can include it here. But this other exercise that is here, um, I guess, well, maybe we can work through this exercise and see if we can uh, we can we can clean up the data associated with, because in the survey, it's, there's a fun part of the survey where we ask people, what, what, uh, what's, what is interesting about you? And I find it interesting the things that people state as interesting things about them, right? Um, this was me saying I cycle, but uh, some people say I sing and whatnot, so I thought it would be nice if we could try and see if we can clean up that column as an exercise, uh, and then, Hopefully we're meeting on Tuesday or something. We should come with masks, but uh, <laughs> but I'll confirm with uh, Dr. Pierre and, and, and Dr. Nyerinda just to find out that we're doing the correct things. At the very least, depending on what you decide as a group, what I would suggest is maybe we can start small. Maybe a first initial session will be, if we're going to go the Hangouts route, first initial se session will be we can look at this example and another example where we get to look at ETDs and work, work through them and try and see if we can all be on the same page. I think that this uh, closure thing is a blessing in disguise because then if we, because if we combine this with, um, <laughs> with the Hangouts, maybe we can cover much more once we come back, I think. We should be good, actually. In fact, maybe we can invite more people to come if the people that we invited won't uh, change their minds because I know Ernest was really looking forward. He was... Uh, I, I, I bumped into him the other time and he was telling me, he was giving me an example of what they do with brain scans. I was shocked when they are, they are reading, because part of his job is they, they send them through the CT scans, MRI scans, and then they have to interpret what is wrong with the patient, right? And he was, I don't know if that was an MRI scan or CT scan. It, it can have, if it's a brain scan, it can have as many as a thousand images, apparently, that they have to manually see through. I remember joking and asking him, do you mean to tell me you manually go through the thousand documents? And he tells me, no. You actually have to prioritize because with, with time you get to know which parts of the images you look at, right? And I sat there and I'm thinking, we have people, smart people in this group and elsewhere, right? Maybe fourth years that can potentially work on these problems, right? The, the funny part, and he told me he included this in his talk, right? The funny part is 
the things he was going to talk about is no the difficulties in transmitting data and I'm telling him we are way past that I don't think people are interested in that right but they struggle with very basic things just to give you an idea of what's going on at UTH they the office where you, you know when you go for a scan there's an office there is no connection between the computers that people use to read the scans and the offices that are right next to them so what they do is they get the CD you give it to someone like the registrar get the CD put it there read it and it's 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 a horrible right um, I sat there and I'm thinking but this is this is probably stuff that our second years or first years can actually do but hopefully it is my hope that uh, I know Ines and I have been chatting about what we could potentially do together as a group but hopefully maybe some people in here might be interested in working in that area maybe we can chat to Ines and see what we can do okay thank you I hope this was helpful somehow uh, gentle steps eventually we start looking at uh, maybe the maths uh, the stuff that people are interested in the most thank you see you